obviously on Mrs. Brown. Oh, God! That's it, Maria. I can see the head. Triplets, what? Yeah. I can't believe it. Maria, who's that? That's my cousin Thomas. Dr. Thomas Clune. Clown. Mammy, please. C-L-O-W-N-E Clown. I'm selling tickets for a raffle. For the local swimming club. There's ten euro for a boot, will you take them? Yeah, sure. Nice. <laughs> is this a scam? Winnie, that was Mr. Foley on the phone. Why is it? It's your Jacko. He's collapsed. He's been taken into hospital. What's that you're selling? Raffle tickets. Well, who would I for? Probably fair with Blue Bell Bass for your band. Thomas is doing a book about women. Why? Uh, Cathy, if I may. Yeah, it's about women, you see, and the way they've changed over the years. How do you give the money to when you have them sold? The early coordinator. And who would that be? Buster Brady. Buster Brady. Jack who needs a bypass of his heart. He's on a waiting list. The doctor said he could be waiting five or six weeks, maybe a month. Jesus, Mammy, I hope he lasts that long. Who knows? Maybe we win the jackpot at the bingo tonight, and then Jacko could have his operation in the morning, huh? Or the raffle. Or the raffle. What feckin' raffle? The Bally Fermat and Bluebell Brass and Reed Band. €5,000 first prize, Agnes. I bought ten books. So, what's up? Don't you ever include my son in any of your fucking scams again. Excuse me, everybody. Excuse me. I'm sorry to interrupt your valuable drinking time, but uh, I have a few words to say about the raffle. What about the raffle? The winner of the 5,000 euro first prize is... Hang on a minute there. Let me get my ticket to... Wait, wait, damn it. Winnie McGugan. She's singing in its evening song Giving a chance she shoes romance the whole night long She's Mrs. Brown Our Mrs. Brown Jesus, Marie, I can't get over how quickly you lost the weight after the babies. Thanks, Cathy. Well, still a bit to go. Well, I think you look fantastic. Sure, I had six and look at me. <laughs> <laughs> you can fuck off. Do you hear that bastard? I swear your granddad'll be the fucking death of me. He has me up and down them stairs like a shit on a swing swung. Is there anybody there? No! Who's that then? Polly the fucking Paris! Me hot water bottle is leaking. What did he say? His hot water bottle is leaking. He doesn't have a hot water bottle, Mummy. Oh, Jesus. I better go up. I don't know whether to bring clean sheets or a fucking lifeboat. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I don't know why she takes him out of the home every weekend. Because she thinks the world of him, Catty. What? Oh, I know she gives him a hard time now and then. But your father was out of work for nine years, pet. Nine whole years. And it was your granddad that kept us all going. Now, your ma'll never forget that. I suppose. Well, look, while she's gone, did Dermot tell you about the party? Oh, yeah. Party? What party? We're organising a surprise party for Mammy's birthday next week. Oh, Jesus, Cathy, she'll be thrilled. <laughs> is there anything I can do to help? Well, actually, Winnie, there is. Can you arrange to have all our friends from the bingo down in Foley's pub for about nine o'clock? Foley's, nine o'clock, I can. 
Oh, well, look, no. Well, we're going to surprise her here first, and then... No. You can stay there all night. I don't give a shit. He knocked over his glass of water in his, in his sleep. Now I can't find his fucking teeth. And he won't get back into bed. He thinks they're in the bed and they're going to chew the balls off him. I, 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 I don't care. I don't, I don't care. Bastard. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> here, go on, Maria, you were oh, saying. Yeah. Well, we're going to surprise her here first. And then we're going to bring her down to Foley's later for the party. Oh, Jesus. Well, listen, leave everything to me. I'll have everybody there. Ah, <laughs> uh, thanks, Winnie. And listen, not a word. Oh, no. Oh. How are you? Are you all right? That's the job. I mean, with Dino not there, it's just not the same. We were just telling Winnie about the party. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the party. Party? What party? All the parties, Mammy. Fianna Fáil, Labour, the whole lot of them, they're discriminating against us gays. What's he fucking talking about? We want to be able to adopt babies, the same as any other couple that's in love. We want gay rights. What do we want? Gay rights. When do we want them? Now. I was just telling the girls about me protest, Mammy. Well, you're, right, you're right to protest. He's right. If you, if you disagree with something, you have to protest. She's with me when, when we were younger. We used to. We did a protest once. We took off our bras and we burned them in the garden. It was great fun, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, when the fire brigade were gone, your father was disgusted. Do you know, see now, the Green Party and Sinn Féin are joining up together. No, there's a thing. They used to be protesters. Yeah, they're calling themselves Guns and Roses. Guns <laughs> and <laughs> Roses. That's just a joke. Mm. Do you know who's great at this protesting now, from, from Winnie's day? Who? The Suffling Jets. <sighs> they're brilliant. You should do, Roy, what they did. You should go down to Dal Airden and chain yourself to the Raidens. No. Forget it now. You're not supposed to fucking enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here. I better be going. Oh, I'll bring the triplets around to you tomorrow, Mrs. Brown. You do that, love. And you know what? I'd mind them for a couple of hours and you get yourself a lie down. You're very good. Thanks very much, Mrs. Brown. I know. You look exhausted. Yeah, uh, I am a bit. <laughs> Now you can see with the blotchy skin and all the bags under your eyes. Jesus knows when they'll go. <laughs> you look shite, love, doesn't you? Come on, Smaggles. Just eat a little bit. You're fucked, ain't you? Oh, good man. Did you feed Spartacus? No, man. I tried to. She's not taking that. Do you think is she? You know, not well. But it don't be ridiculous. She's just being thick and moody, that's all. Build the bridge and get over it, Spartacus! Yeah. She's getting old, ma. Old my ass. He's only... What? Nine? She's 15, ma. That's in feckin' dog years, Damus. That doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, ma. You're right. What am I thinking? Hello? 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 Ah, Buster, how are you? Yeah, sure, where? Marios. All right, I'll see you there. Right, ma, I gotta go. Well, here you. You don't go out wearing that shirt. Put on something comfortable. You look like a feckin' lumberjank. You have every gay in the country following you. Ro 
glory. For God's sake, what are you doing out here? Come in. No, I'll just wait out here for you. I mean, you're only in that job a week. And it looks stupid if someone from your old job came down to see you. Oh, don't be silly. They'll love you. And anyway, you're not someone. Come on. Dino, let's go somewhere else. I don't feel very comfortable here. Not at all. I'll get you some coffee. Who is your trashy friend? That is my partner. And that over there is your client. Now fuck off. <laughs> Hurry, Mario. You don't look busy. Not busy? You should have been here an hour ago. The espresso machine's acting up, the toilets keep blocking. I can't get any staff and I'm up to me eyes. She looks like she wants to work. She does. She's a great worker, but her English isn't great. Watch this. Helena. Da? Can you get me a toasted ham sandwich? A ham sandwich. Ah. Держи. See? Jesus, what'd you get if you asked for a banana? <laughs> Shut up. Come here. Have you seen Busser around at all? He's over there, hiding. How are you doing, So, who's after you now? Giddy Oi Fagan and his boys. Sweet Jesus. What did you do? I got a lend out of a grand of them, just to buy some cheap cigarettes. And we lost it. There's a hole in my pocket. Puff, gone. Thanks, Mario. Listen, Buster, I haven't got it if you're looking for it off me. No, dear me. I want to earn it. What? Dear me, I'm going straight. Ish. I want to get a job like everybody else. What's it like down in your promotions? Any jobs down in your end? No. But if you're serious, I'll ask around. Oh, yeah, I'm serious, dear me. It's the straight life for me, dear me. Straight. Where's the sugar? Okay. Just a habit. Straight from now. married again. Properly this time. Just to know you had someone to come home to. Someone that, you know, loves just you. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean, Cathy, but it's not like that. Not all the time. You have to compete with his job, the kids. Christ, even match of the day for a bit of attention. And as for sex, between homework, football training, mammy this and mammy that, and his overtime, you're lucky if you can squeeze it in once a week. Once a week? I die. Oh, none of that for us. I just say, Corny, ridey ride now. Not now, Corny. Sit. Oh, I'm telling you, marriage is not for us, is it, Corny? Corny has no time for marriage, have you? Well, I. See, he hates it. Hi, yes. Managed to get away for an hour. Thanks a million for letting Bono babysit. So, what's new? Sharon, show Maria Corny's trick. Ridey ride. <laughs> Busy, Mick. Don't talk to me, Tim. I'm up to you rocks in it. Can't get anyone to work. Seriously? Listen, I have a job at the moment. Enough is fit out. 
You think I can get a labourer? No chance. Buster is looking for work. Buster Brady. Give us a break, Dermot, will you? No, seriously, Mark. He's going straight. Jesus, Mark, give him a chance, would you? I'll vouch for him. Here you go, Dermot, son. Thanks, Mr Foley. Will I put one on for you, Mark? Thanks, Mr Foley, yeah. Listen, Dermot, I can't afford to have any funny business. You won't. I'll warn him. Sure, I'm going to live to regret this. All right. Part time. Brilliant. <laughs> You wouldn't, would you? What? You wouldn't want to get married, would you? Would you? That'd be stupid. <laughs> See, ma. Mm, come here. Good man. Now, after school, you're to go to your granny's stall and I'll pick you up there. Yes. Go on, off with you. See you, there. Say it, son. Listen, love. I'm going to tell you something now, right? And when I do, I want you to keep the head. Of course I will. God, you make me sound awful. Right. Well, I'm after giving Buster Brady a job. What kind of fucking idiot are you? Look, he wants to go straight. Do you know what? I'm not going to make any comment. That'll be the day. No, I'm not. Some mistakes are just so obvious they don't need comment. Do what you like. He won't last a day. Oh, Jesus, Spartacus! Jesus Christ! What's wrong? It's me blouse, Mummy. It's ruined, that feckin' dog. Now, go easy on Spartacus. She's getting old. Give me a look at it. Is that it? Yes. It's only a bit of mud. She's been living in the sink. I'd rinse it out later. It'd be as good as new. Oh, will you, Mummy? Yes. Oh, thanks. Listen, I'm just slipping out to meet Thomas. I'll be back in a few minutes. I mightn't be here. I, I said I'd walk Minnie down to the shops. It's a feckin' drama, and you're making a big mountain hill out of a mold hill. Big mold thing. Um, mountain hill out of an ant's hole. Right. Well, you seem to have all the qualifications that we need for a stylist here. Oh, I do. I'm brilliant. Well, is there anything else that you want to add? Yes, well, I don't do Wednesdays ever. It's a thing with my mother I don't want to discuss. I suppose not. And I don't do Thursday mornings. It's my yoga day. You don't look this good without effort. I suppose not. And you can tell my assistant that I only drink freshly brewed Java coffee. So when I say, get me a coffee, it's Java I want. Right. Well, let me just write that down. <laughs> Now, I think that's everything. We let you know. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, is he starting? I wouldn't let him shear sheep. For God's sake, Rory, you better get someone soon. Look, you're not going to find another Dino, oh. so stop looking. And I have a pain in my arse taking up all the slack. Well, build a bridge and get over it. How are you? Hello, Mr. Rabbit. What are you doing? I'm waiting on a man. I got a job selling lighters. He told me every five boxes I sell, I'll get a free box. A box of what? I don't know. I hope it's not fucking lighters. Listen, I have a job for you. Really? Where? 
with Mark. Now it's just part time, but if you mind yourself, you might keep you full time. Damn it, that's bleeding brilliant. Right, you better move it. You have to meet him in an hour. And Buster, no funny business. I promise, Mark, you are going straight. Don't let me down. I won't, damn. I promise. Right, you better hop it. <laughs> hop it. Kangaroo, hop it. Rabbit. Buster, you're early. early. Well, that's a good start, anyway. And we brought a hammer. Right, come on, let's go. Hello, yeah, Mark Brown from Mr. O'Reilly. Mark, what I want here is shelves straight down and across. You got that? No problem, Mr. O'Reilly. Good man. Right, Buster, I want you to measure that. Three places. Across the top, the bottom, and straight down the middle. Measuring tape, notebook, buster. Back in 15 minutes. No problem, Mark. Could I borrow a pen, mister? Help yourself. Thanks. That's a nice watch. Thanks. I bet you that was expensive, what? Well, it wasn't cheap, son. I bet. How are you? No, love, with no spring onions in fucking October. A crazy spring onion. You want a bit of rhubarb, love? Hey, Grant. Uh, hello, chicken. How are you? Here, clear a bit of space there and do your homework. Ah, uh, Grant. Ah, uh, Grant, me ass. Now go and do it. Have it done when you get home, surprise your mother. You have to use your head, son. Otherwise, you'll end up a fickin' failure. You'll be working as a fickin' teacher or something. Love, they're bananas, love. Not Mickey's. You don't get bigger if you squeeze them. Dad's after giving Buster a job. Buster Brady? Yeah, it's great, huh? You like him, don't you? I sound. He's not the worst. Well, uh, Buster, that's that. Tell you what, you've done a good job. Thanks, Mark. Do you want me again tomorrow? Yeah, right. Same time. Want a lift? No, no, I'm going to get out to Fowley's and have a point. Right. See you tomorrow then, right? Right, good luck, Mike. And my blouse was in shit. I mean, it's not the blouse. I remember the day Daddy brought her home. She was only a little puppy. I picked her name, you know. Spartacus. Here, Spartacus. Who's a nice girl, Spartacus? Lovely girl, Spartacus. Yeah, we get the point, Rory. That was 15 years ago. She's old and tired now. So she can hardly even bark. We have to do what's right for the dog. Yeah, but putting her down. God. <laughs> well, that feels like murder. Psst, watch it. I rinsed out your blouse. Thanks, Mummy. And you're going to hang it out in the line. John and George are asleep in there. OK. Do you want me to keep an eye on them? No. I have the monitor on. Fine. Now, the big question. Who's going to tell Mammy? Well, not me. Well, not me. Not me. 
Well, she loves that dog. I killed that fucking dog. Jeremy, I think you should be the one that should sit Mammy down and break the news to her. You're the best at talking to her. Right then, I'll do it. Poor Mammy. She'll be very upset. Is there not a home we could put her into? It's just... Then she could spend her last days with other old bitches. Do you know, Cathy? That's a great idea. If you want, I'll phone around and check. But Mark's right. Something has to be done soon. I mean, she is getting worse. I don't like her going near the babies. Well, she keeps trying to lick them. Well, she's getting very smelly. I watched her in the garden last week, and she was just pissing as she walked along. And the worst thing was, she didn't even know it. Look, she doesn't know where she is half the time. I think her mind is gone. Right then. It's agreed. She has to go. Mammy! Are you all right? I never felt better in me fucking life. Come all the way out here for the fucking cigarette. I'm going to change my lifestyle. Gonna what? My lifestyle. I'm going to change it. I think the family see me as older than I am. And how old are you? Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry I am. You should get that thing off the telly. The silly bang! No, it's a beauty thing. All the young ones are using it. My Chardon uses it. Mind you, she got a rash. Scratched for days. You're shedding to get a rash off the radio. <laughs> to you. What's it called? Oh, uh, hmm. Hawaiian, Hawaiian snow, Hawaiian iceberg. That's a lettuce. Oh, Hawaiian something anyway. Hawaiian something, Hawaiian iceberg or something. Hawaiian? Yes. Um, the elderly section is over this side. That's nice. I'm looking for the young people section. Oh, sorry, this side. Oh. Hawaiian! Thanks very much, Chuck. <laughs> so, are you happy enough? Very. Great job. Well done. OK, well, listen, I'll make up a bill and send it off to you. That's fine. OK. Mark. Yes, Mr O'Reilly. You didn't happen to see a watch there. A watch? I left it here at my desk. A black rado. It's expensive. My wife gave it to me. No, Mr. Royley, sorry I didn't. Ah, not to worry. Probably torn up. Yeah, let's hope so. Right, see you now. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, you're all very welcome. It's a great day for the company. Nice car, mister. It's lovely, isn't it? Now scram! Come here. Can you do something, you know, like superheroish, like? Like what? I don't know. Lift the car up or something. I have a jetpack. I could fly around the showroom if you like. Yeah, I can. I can in me bollocks.
Hurry, Mac. What's up? Listen, Batman. When you're done here, meet me down on the Fowleys. Why? Is everything all right? No. I have it. I have it. Could you puff up and blow out like you were going to cause a hurricane? Why don't you whistle up me arse? I'm going to start doing exercises. Yeah? Oh. I started this morning. Down one, two, three, up one, two, three. Then the other lace. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I am. And I'm going to do yogurt. Oh. Lotus blossom. I'm going to do that as well. Yeah. Mm. My Aunt Sally was very fit. Was she? Oh, geez, yes. Hmm. She was 92 and she could still do the splits. Jesus. The gas. She done it in the church once. They had to get her off the ground with a screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> you should start doing the bodybuilding. Yeah. I was thinking of that. Yeah? Yeah. You should join a gym. That's what you should do. Oh, I did? Yeah. Yes, I did. I, yeah. They had me on the circuits. Go on. It starts with a four mile run. Yeah. And then to cool down you do a two and a half mile power walk. Then I do the bodybuilding. Some weights in the afternoon. Mm. Then I might try doing some aerobics. Aerobics? Yeah. You're joking me. I know, but you fucking started it. Jesus, Agnes, what were you feckin' doing? Jogging. Jogging? Doing laps, laps of the shopping centre. And how many did you do? One. Nearly fucking killed me. You've lost your bloody mind. Winnie, they're putting me in a home. Who is? The family. No, they're not. They are. I heard them talking about it, and they're whispering behind me back. Oh, they think I don't see them, but I do. That'll be about the... That'll be your imagination, Agnes Brown. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm losing me... things. Yeah. The beckoned psychiatrist. What psychiatrist? Teddy's boyfriend, the clown. He's not examining me for a book. He's testing me for the home. Well, I tell you now, Winnie, I won't go without a fight. They'll have to drag me out that fucking door screaming. And I'm taking every strip of wallpaper with me. You're going to see Ag Agnes Brown's last stand. <laughs> as soon as I get my breath. Now, here's the one that God forgot. How are you, Grandad? How are you doing? Were you out 
For your walk, pet. It's just down in the graveyard. Ah, who's dead? The whole fucking lot of them. I'm going back to get me washing in. I'll call back and see you later. Agnes, no more feckin' jogging. Will you keep your eye open for me pelopian tube out there? <laughs> well, Grandad. They're going to put me in home. You're rare a family and that's the thanks you get. A feckin' home. And they won't visit. Have you nothing to say? <laughs> me thinks he just say too much. I can't believe it. I don't believe it. Really, I don't. He didn't do it. Cathy, the watch is gone. And the last person in the office was Buster. He's right, Cathy. It all points to Buster. Well, I'm not saying I told you so. He just did. I think it would be only fair to ask Buster and see what he says. At least give him a chance. It's Buster for God's sake. He's nearly family. I don't believe it. Come on, Cathy, let's leave them to it. What's up? I'll tell you what's up. The man I've just been working for is missing a black watch. And I bet you think Buster stole it. What do you think? I think Buster's an easy target. And you aren't even bothering to look anywhere else. Point, Dermot. That's a nice watch, Mr Foley. Thanks, Mark. It only cost me 40 euro. Yeah. yeah. Where'd you buy it? I bought it from Buster Brady. And you can have it for 60 if you want. For fuck's sake. And karate chop, karate chop. One, two, three. And that's it. Oh, Buster. Buster, tell the boys about Paris Hilton. Oh, Paris Hilton? Listen. Oh, lads. She was hanging out with me. Absolutely hanging out with me. She thought it was gorgeous. She kept on touching me and all that. And it was nice. It was nice. She wasn't my type of girl. But now she's been to prison. Hey, who knows? We might get it on. <laughs> right, listen, I have to go. Give me five, five, five. And lads, say no to the drugs. <laughs> say no to the drugs. See us. Good luck. That man is a legend. Legend. Buster. How are you doing? Just keep an eye out for Giddy Oi. We nearly have his money. Just a couple of hundred to go. Yeah, well. The 40 euro you got for the watch from Mr. Foley must have helped. Yeah, it did, yeah. Where did you get that watch? Don't know. Here or there. You know yourself. You robbed it. From the man Mark was working for. No, dear, I have that will. Don't bleed and lie to me. You let me down and you embarrass Mark. So here's the deal. Stay away from me and stay away from me family. Dear me. I'm my bestest friend in the whole world. Not anymore, Buster. Friends don't do that to each other. I mean it. Stay away. <laughs> oh, I love surprises. Rory, will you shut up? He's going to give it away, I'm telling you. Rory, this is to be the best kept secret. If I hear you let it out, I'll kill you. I won't. I just want to know where we are on it. Well, Winnie has everybody lined up to be here in Foley's for nine o'clock. And I'll supply the cake, of course. And a discount, of course. At half price. At half price. A free, of course, free. But we're going to have the surprise at home, yeah? Oh, yeah. But in the meantime, nobody mentioned our birthday. We'll all pretend we forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get you a point there, Mo? No. Fair enough. Come on, we better go. We're going to apartment hunting. We've been searching for weeks now. I know, but the places we can afford are dumps, and the places we like we can't afford. 
Still, it's great fun poking around in other people's places. Rory, does Mammy know you're moving out? No, I'll wait till we get a place before I tell her. Jesus, she won't be happy. I know, I'm not looking forward to telling her. Come on, we better go. We better go too. My mother has a trip to Thanera now. Rory. No, thanks. I better make a move. So what are you going to do with the watch? I don't know. I was thinking of going back to the office. Just let on I'm checking over the job. Maybe slip it under the chair or something. Let him find it himself. I don't know. Why don't you tell him the truth? Ah, oh, yeah. Excuse me, but Buster Brady robbed this watch while he was walking from me. Here you are. No hard feelings. Yeah, that walked like a fucking charm, wouldn't it? He didn't. Didn't what? Buster, he didn't rob that watch. And how do you know? I asked him. He said he didn't rob the watch. But that's all right then, isn't it? Buster wouldn't lie, would he? He's right and we're all wrong. He wouldn't lie. You are wrong. So leave him alone. Don't get cheeky with me. You can go upstairs and get out with them clothes. You look like a little... Buster says, give a dog a bad name. I don't care what Buster says. You can go upstairs and get out with them clothes. Now! Do what your father tells you. That was a bit harsh. Look, I don't want him looking up to that scumbag as a hero. So, about the watch. I meant it, Mark. Just walk back into Mr. O'Reilly's office and tell him the truth. A part-time worker stole it and you're returning it. He'll appreciate the honesty. Do you think so? I do. Come in. Mr. Brown. Want to thank you for an excellent job. Well done, pay you. Well, before you fix me up, I just want to, uh What? Well, you know the other day, you said your watch was missing. Oh, my watch? On the desk? Yeah. Well, here. It's a copy. Worth about 20 euros. I'd have bought it off you only found me own. In the drawer, in the bathroom. But I'll pay you. I, I tell you what, fix me up tomorrow, Mr. O'Reilly. Something I have to do. I owe somebody money. And an apology. I'll see you tomorrow, Mr. O'Reilly. How are you, Mammy? Hello, love. Mammy, have you got a minute to talk? Sure, love, what do you want? 
Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Uh, excuse me, Rory, yes. Uh, Mrs. Brown, yes. Uh, uh, good to see you here. Uh, I, I was just wondering, actually, um, could I pop round, do you think, uh, later in the week? Uh, what evening, perhaps? You see, I, I just want to ask you a few questions. Well, it's for a test, actually. It's, uh, it's for my book. Yeah, my book, yes, uh, The Place of Woman in Society, yes? Fine. Good. So that's, uh, that's a yes, then? Oh, bring it on, Jasper. Right, will do. Well, I'll see you later in the week, then. Yes? Yes. You're in company here, love, not conversation. Oh, uh, yes, uh, sorry, well, uh, thank you, and, uh, goodbye. <laughs> and the door hit you in the air on the way out. Uh, thank you. <laughs> He's nice. Lovely. Mammy. What? Do you not think that the house is a bit crowded? No, I don't. I think the house is fine. I think there's plenty of room for everyone, especially me. Maybe I'm putting it wrong. Um, Mammy, do you not think... That no matter how comfortable you are at home, the time comes to leave. No. Go somewhere new. No. But, Mammy, everybody else is gone. I don't give a shit what everyone else is doing. And I'd like the house exactly the way it is. And if it doesn't suit you, you can up and move out. Someone's here for the stylist job. Well, tell him to go away. I'm not interviewing anybody else. Uh, oh, I think you'll want to interview this one. Can I help you? Oh. Is that job still open? <gasps> With Jacko not there, I'm just sitting over there in my own worrying. You fucking idiot. Sitting in your own worrying. You're sitting in your own, there's two things you don't want for company, and one is worry. True. And the other is fucking prime time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, Winnie McGugan? What? You need something to take your mind off Jacko, the hospital, the whole lot. And I have just the feckin' thing. What? Here. You can help me with my bikini wax thing. Oh, Jesus. Listen, we better do that upstairs in the bathroom. No, no. No, we can't. Can't do it in the bath. No, we do it here. Agnes, you can't do it here. Someone might walk in on you. You're right. It looks like it's stupid. Yeah. I have an idea. What? You take the constructions. And I go into the cupboard and you call them out to me. Oh, you're not getting in that cupboard, Jack. Come on, Winnie. It's only for the crack. Right. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> oh, no. OK. Are yes. you ready? Yes, I'm ready. OK, love. Expose the relevant area. What the fuck does that mean? Get your knickers down. <laughs> no sooner said than done. <laughs> Open the container and spread the cold wax using the spatula. Oh, the fucking smell. Is the cold wax smelly? I can't get the fucking thing open. OK, I have it. <laughs> Winnie. What? What's a spatula? Oh, it's like a little spoon. There's none in the box. It's all right, I'll use the lid. Right. <coughs> oh, Jesus, it's freezing. OK, I'm spread. Remove the backing from the sticky tape and apply it firmly to the area. Oh, now... I'm trying to go around fucking corners here. Ah, it's stuck to me arse! Uh, OK, now what? Now count to three and pull the tape off briskly. Now that means yank it off. 
three, two, one. by an elephant and he was in a fucking hurry what do you want to talk about I wanted to ask you not to make any plans for Friday night Friday why what's Friday we're all going to be here for a family meeting family meeting Shut up, Spartacus. Ma, we need to discuss something. Do we? Make a decision. I see. But then we're going to take you somewhere, Ma. These bastards. Oh, no, Ma, it's somewhere nice. Say, says you. Damn it. Is the whole family in on this? Oh, yeah, Ma. Every one of us. Fine. Well, I tell you now, son, it won't be fucking easy. You'll have to catch me first. Damn it! Did you feed that dog like I asked you to? No, my I forgot. For gosh, now who's losing their fucking mind? Shut up, Sparty, as I'll be with you in a minute. Who'll feed you when I'm fucking gone? Where's Mummy? Out the back, feeding Spartacus. Oh, Jesus, did you talk to her about putting the dog in a home? Yeah. Kind of. Ah, oh, damn it, what the hell is that supposed to mean, kind of? Look, I prepared her. Kind of. She's in a very weird humour. I'll see you. See ya. Mummy, Thomas is here for the tests for his research. Is he? Bring him in. Are you married, Mr. Foley? Yes, I was. She passed away 12 years ago, God love her. Did you like us? Yes, I did. I loved it. There were times when I thought I'd just burst with happiness. Then there was this time that we went on holiday. Yeah, yeah. Shush, shush. Fucking boring me now. Do you know what Cornelius told me? That you're a lush? No. He said I was the best thing that happened to him since he got his braces off. He had braces on his teeth? His legs. Not nice, but... What are you looking at? Are you sure about this, Thomas? You've tried working with my mother before, and it was like talking to a revolving door. Yes, yes, well, well with respect, Cathy, I have a, have a lot more experience with these matters than you have, eh? And, uh, <laughs> and I've learned never to give up. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> Hello, Miss Brown. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Zhivago. 
<laughs> oh, right, right, yes. Now then, Mrs. Brown, yes, indeed, yes, yes. Uh, I, I just wondered if you wouldn't mind answering those few questions that, uh, that Kathy was telling you about. It's, uh, well, <laughs> it's research, my book, yes? Oh, yes. The book. Yeah, the big fucking book. I know what's going on. Go on, Jasper, get on with it. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Right, um... Right, um, uh, oops. <laughs> These things happen. Technical things. <laughs> now then, Mrs. Brown, now, um, right, right. Um, 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 interview with Mrs. Agnes Brown, a, 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 a female subject, aged, um... Over 25. Yes, quite. Do you mind if I stay? Sorry, what did you say? She said, do you mind if she stays? No! God! God! No, Cathy, uh, <laughs> you sit there, whatever. Uh, let's make a start, shall we? Now then, Mrs. Now then, Miss Brown, yes. Um, 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 could you pick one obvious difference between your mother hmm, and yourself? Now, just in there, please. Yes, I could. Over. <laughs> good, good, good. And, and, and what would it be? Just in there, please. My mother is dead. I am not. Over. Two out of fucking two. No, Mrs Brown, I'm, uh, I'm looking, looking for, looking for an opinion. An opinion. Now. In my opinion, my mother is dead. In a lot of people's opinion, we fucking buried her. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> no, no, Mrs. Brown, let, let me explain, Mrs. Brown, let me explain. I want you to, hmm, to, to, to compare things from your mother's time, right, right? With your time now. <laughs> Look, Mammy, Thomas was just. Uh, Kathy, Kathy, dear, if you don't mind, I'm conducting the interview. Thank you. Yeah, but Mammy doesn't understand what you're. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Zip, lock, fuck away, key. Oh. If we need you, we'll fucking call you. Quite so, Miss Brown. Quite so. Thank you indeed. Now then, Mrs. Brown. Now then, Mrs. Brown. I want you to, hmm, to, 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 to cast your mind back to your mother's day. Mother's day. Mother's day. Yes, your mother's day. <laughs> the 29th of March. Sorry? What? What? <laughs> That was Mother's Day. No, 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 Mrs. Brown, Mrs. Brown. Your Mother's Day, yes? That's everybody's fucking Mother's Day. Or did you not have a mother? Of course I had a mother. And did you love her? <laughs> of course I loved her. Then why did you forget Mother's Day? <laughs> what do you see, Mrs. Brown? You see, the thing is, I. You see, I did. I, I did much. <laughs> <laughs> I never fucking touched him. <laughs> you see, Mrs. Brown, I I, 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 I didn't actually forget Mother's Day, but you see, well, she, she was always so busy. I mean, I yeah, mean, yeah, all those, yeah. those friends of hers yeah. and that social circle she had. I mean, I mean, I mean, she never had any time for me, you know. I mean, me, her little boy. <laughs> Thomas! Thomas, are you all right? Are you fucking blind? <laughs> Thomas! <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Brown, I'm sorry, I apologise. I don't know what's happened to you. <laughs> no, no, sir, that's fine. There's no, no need to apologise. These, these things happen. No, that's all right. You know, yeah, no, no, don't fucking leave me here, Daddy. I'm not doing... No, 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 no. Right. Let me explain. Oh, Fuck off. Right. Oh, dear. Right. 
Right. Right. Right. Mrs. Mrs. Brown, where, where were we, Mrs. Brown? You were saying that your mother didn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> Your buddy Buster Brady. He was in here a few minutes ago. Left in a bit of a hurry. Why? Giddy Eye Flanagan and his boys came in looking for him. Looked like they meant business. Mr. Foley? How long are they gone? Uh, a few minutes ago. Damn it. Have you seen Buster? No. And I don't care if I never do. Damn it. He didn't do it. The watch. He didn't rob it. I feel shy. I owe him an apology. Ah, oh, shit. Giddy Eye Flanagan is chasing him as we speak. Buster's no one to help him. I know. Hello? Betty? You what? For fuck's sake. Right, go on. Damn it. Bono's missing. He's after leaving a note saying he's going to help Buster Brady. Where would Buster go? He could be anywhere, but if I know Buster, it'll be a cul-de-sac. Oh, shit, it's a cul-de-sac. So here we are, Buster. Pick a leg you want broken. His? <laughs> Don't be smart. You're on your own. No, he's not. <laughs> Who's this? Bugs him alone. No, his name is Bono. And he's my son. Da! So the three years are going to take us on. Fuck. It's Superman. Damn it. Keep your family out of it. He is family. And we're the Browns. You take on one, you take on all of us. Come on, you chicken bastards. Bring it on. <laughs> Buster, shut up. Come on, lads. It's not worth it. So, how is he? I put him in a taxi. I can see the headlines in the morning. Taxi man fucking hangs himself. He was very upset, Mummy. Well, you can't blame him. It's hard enough driving a taxi around Dublin without having to put up with that shit. I meant Thomas, Mummy. Oh. Well, maybe he's not upset. Maybe he's just relieved, you know. Maybe he's... After all the time, all these years out in the wilderness, the psychological wilderness that is, you know, Tolka Park, he's been up to left and he's been up to right and maybe it's up to back he needs it, you know. And he realised tonight that he's, um, you know, well, fucking mad. But you know something, Mummy? 
he'll feel better for getting that out. That's exactly what I said to your father the night I met him. <laughs> <laughs> now look at you laughing. That's what you, you need now, is it? And that's what he needs, a good fucking laugh to cure everything. Mammy, did you ever think about becoming a counsellor? Me? Oh, no. Don't be ridiculous, Cathy. I'd never fucking get elected. <laughs> no, Mammy. I mean, talking to people about their problems and, well, helping them come up with the answers. That's what a counsellor does. Is it? Jesus. That's what the mother does as well. Except, except we don't get any training or payment. Yeah, I'm a mother. Don't get troubles on me for fucking free. <laughs> <laughs> that rhymes. <laughs> Maybe I should be a poet like Seamus um, she <clears throat> Healy, singer. Very good. Mammy. What? Did Dermot talk to you about the home? Yes, he did. Oh, I'm sorry, Mammy. Are you upset? No, no. No, I fucking delighted. What do you think? I suppose. But, Mummy, it really is for the best. Well, it's not for the best for me, thank you. Well, I think it is, Mummy. Et tu, Brutus. Oh, yes. Go on, stab me in the back, just like Brutus did to Popeye. Look, Mummy, it's a lovely home. It's clean, and there's loads of fields around with lots of space to run about. Do I look like fucking shared there to you? Mummy, there are experienced, professional people running this place. I don't care, Cathy. They go around all day with smiles on their faces, picking up shit with their little scoops. <laughs> fucking shit scoopers! <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Damn it, I'm in here a fucking hour now. Will you come on? Ma? Are you ready? What's the suitcase for? They're my curtains. I take them if I fucking want them. Damn it. Oh, fuck. Son, you were always my favourite. Do you know when you were born, the doctor said, What the fuck is that? He said, Unless you got a good massage five times a day, every day, for the first six months, you'd die. And it was me, son. Five times every day, I put you into that tumble dryer. With the she's a bounce. You used to smell like a cloud. Think about that, son. Think about it. And ask yourself, do you want to do this to your mother? I'm positive, ma. You bastard, you. Your father was right. I should have put you in the fucking sack with the kittens. Are you ready? What the family want, and I'm ready. Now! Surprise! <laughs> Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear mommy! Happy birthday to you! <laughs> this is it! This is the fucking surprise! Yeah, Mummy, we all knew you'd forget. Are you delighted? You've no fucking idea how delighted I am. I thought you were going to put me in a home. What? Ah, oh, Ma. Why would we do that? This is your home. And where would we all be without you? You were always my favourite. Oh, no. Mummy, you heard us talking about putting Spartacus in a home. Spartacus? A toast! Jesus Christ. To Mrs. Brown. Yeah, cheers, Mom. Mom. <laughs> now wait, stop this, Malarkey. 
Let's get down to Foley's and get this fucking party started. <laughs> Come on, the runaway train went over the hill and she blew. She blew. She blew. <laughs> the runaway train came over the hill and she blew. She blew. The runaway train came over the hill. The run, the come over the, the runaway train. What for? The runaway comes over the, the. Mommy, can we talk to you for a minute, please? Sure. What's wrong? <laughs> you have no money. Go on and lend you the dinner. No, mommy, we're okay for money. Are you sure? Yeah. Lend the dinner, will you? Look, mommy. You know we were talking about putting Spartacus in a home. Yes. Look, children, I, I know it's tough, but dogs get older quicker than we do, and they can't talk, and they can barely lick their willies. And I know it's tough, but sometimes you have to do what's best for the dog, and Spartacus is lucky. Going to a place where there's lots of space and dogs to play with. No, Mummy. We can't. Why not? Ma, the vet said Spartacus was too sick to put her in a home. Can we get another vet? No, Ma. We had to have her put down. <gasps> Damn it! The woman was only doing her fucking job. You can't go around whacking minor professionals just because you disagree with their diagnosis. I'm talking about the dog, Ma. I know you were. I was trying to make light of it. Fifteen years we have Spartacus. Fifteen years. I remember the day your father brought her home. She was just a puppy. He said he won us in the big willy competition. <laughs> I hope he only took out enough to win the dog. I came through that door to give him a piece of my mind and he just stood there with that fucking silly grin on his face and this little hairy thing in his hand. And the dog running around the place trying to fucking get up on the couch. <laughs> when? When, 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 when was it done? This morning. Today? Happy birthday, Mammy, we killed your fucking dog. <laughs> Don't give me anything for fucking Christmas. I love that budgie. Well, that's it then. Or as they say in Islamabad. That's it then. It's nobody's fault. No. Look, Mammy. Come on, we'll buy you that drink. You go on, I'll follow you down. I want to put on something nice. I don't do it to a fucking party like this. <laughs> go on, you go on, I'll follow you down. <laughs> Run away train came over the hill and she blew. She blew. I made sure that house. Good luck, Spartacus. Beautiful, gentle son. All those years of painful childhood, going to school with no saddle on your bike. <laughs> and all the years you spent trying to get out of the wardrobe. Rory, I want you to know, 
I'm not homophobic. Oh. And just don't like your queer friends. <laughs> I'm only joking, <laughs> son. <laughs> Granddad, yeah. you have a home in my house for as long as you live. Ah, that's nice, that's nice. Can I stay for Christmas? I wouldn't fucking count on it. Oh. <laughs> Buster Brady, the son I never wanted. Buster, what's that on your face? Ah, oh, I'm giving up the fags, Aggie. <laughs> Damn it, Brown. Son, I love the bones of you. But I could never do for you what I've seen what's your name do. You know, Damus, with the birth of John, George and Ringo, he's made a father of you. But much more important, every day I see her making a man of you. And you're the very lucky boy. Don't you forget that. And Maria, what can I say about you that hasn't already said by people who ought to have more respect? But I will give you a little bit of motherly advice. Get yourself down to Boots. Listerine, two for one. <laughs> Jesus Christ, her breath to drop a horse at 20 pieces. <laughs> Mark Brown, my beautiful son. He's a carpenter, you know. Jesus was a carpenter. <laughs> you know what Mary Magdalene was. Winnie McGugan, my dearest friend, and her husband Jacko, he's a world famous clown, retired. Show them, Jacko. Ah, isn't he alert? He has. He, ah, ah, ah. And Winnie. Winnie, we've been together through thick and thin. I was always thin. Winnie, when Reggie lost his job and I had no money, you were there by my side. I was, love. And when the children were sick, it was you that was right there beside me. True. The night they took Reggie into the hospital, it was you that was in the ambulance. Yeah. And the night Reggie died. Where were you the night Reggie died? Winnie, tell them, tell them. By your side, Agnes. By my side. Winnie, you're a fucking jinx. Thomas. Yes? How are you? Oh. Caddy. Caddy, I hope you don't take this as an insult, love. But in you, I see myself. Five, ten years ago, naked, running through the fields and all the hurlers getting out of the way. <laughs> Lying by the canal, sucking a fisherman's friend. Keeping his bait warm for him. Katty, go out and live your dreams. And remember, out there somewhere is a man that will love you forever. That's me you're talking about, Mrs. Brown. Me! <laughs> <laughs> out fucking there. 